Hello everyone, my name is Mohamed Azam, and in this video you'll be learning about how you can use Swift data to create a recursive tree-like structure. So you can see that we have the top level, the root element, electronics, but I can go ahead and click on it and see more nested components of electronics, like computers. I can go into computers and I can see laptops. I can open up laptops, I can see MacBook, as well as Dell. Let me open, go ahead and open a MacBook, and it says M1, and for Dell, it says XPS. So this is exactly what we'll be building using Swift data. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I've created a very basic Swift UI application. We have not really integrated Swift data yet. The first thing we need to do is to create our class, the model that we want to persist in Swift data. Now you can create a model in a different file, that's perfectly fine, but I'm just gonna go ahead and create it over here just to save some time. So here's our category model, and we're gonna decorate it with the model, uh, which is a macro. Now it says unknown attribute model, that's because we need to also import Swift data. So let's go ahead and import Swift data. Now what kind of properties will this category have? Well, this is like a category on an e-commerce store. So it can have electronics and computers and all that stuff. So it will have a name. So let's go ahead and add a name over here. The next thing that we want to add is a relationship. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a relationship that this category can have items as a property, which is an array of more categories. All right, so we have a category class which has a name and it has an items property, but the item property itself is an array of more categories. We need to go ahead and implement the initializer. So we're taking this initializer which takes a name and items and we're making sure that items you, if you don't pass in items, we're gonna use a default value of nil. So this is going to hopefully satisfy our criteria for building a model. Now, one of the other things that we need to do is this is simply an array of categories. We also need to create a parent category, right? I mean, if you remember, we looked at our page when we were running, we started with the electronics, right? We were electronics, and then we were going into computers. So the parent of the computer will be electronics. So we need to have also some sort of a property that is the parent, and this is also a category. So the parent is going to simply point to the parent. If you look at the top, which is electronics, right, electronics, and this has computers. There is no parent for the electronics, so that's why the category is optional. We will simply not provide any parent for electronics, so there is no parent. We also need to update our items because each of this category will also point to the items. So this can be done by a relationship. So we'll create a relationship with a delete rule, delete rule. And you can have many different kind of delete rule, like if you delete, an, if the item is deleted, what will happen to the parent, right? I mean, we can say probably nullify over here so that all the items or all the parents will be null, or well, single parent will be null, and the inverse will be like each category in the item will be pointing to the category dot parent, so that this is the inverse relationship. The items is an array of categories and each category will be pointing to a parent. If you delete that category from the array, then the parent will be nullified, okay? So this is our structure for our model that we are creating. The next thing that we want to do is to initialize our model container. 
So I'm going to go over here in the previews and initialize the model container for the category. That's the only class that we have. And we're going to make it in memory because we're just working with the previews. We don't really want to persist the data unless you want to. That's perfectly fine, but I don't really want to persist the data. So that's why I'm simply putting in memory true. In order to perform any action or access the model context in the content view, we can simply access it using environment, model context, private var context. And this is only going to work if you have injected the model container at the this particular level, like on the view itself. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, use a VStack. Okay. And I'll add a button that will allow me to initialize our stuff. I mean, you can add a button or you can just, you know, do it uh, when everything loads. That's perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and use the button approach for now. So I'm just going to go ahead and say add categories. So you can actually see what's going on. Let's create a category. So I'm going to go ahead and create a category. I'll say electronics. This will be a category. It will have a name. It doesn't really have any, uh, you know, parent or anything. Actually, I think I may have made a mistake over here. Yeah, right here. It shouldn't really be items. We should be passing the parent. So make sure that you don't do that because, you know, every item, every category that you're going to be passing you will uh, be passing the parent of that, not the items. So there we go. And that particular relationship between the parent and the item will automatically be inferred. So now we can go ahead and say category. Here we go. Now it looks much better. Now, since this is the top level root category, it doesn't really have any parent. So I can simply say electronics over here and that will be perfectly fine. The next thing we're going to create will be computers. So I'll say computers equals to category. The name will be computers. And now we know the parent, which is electronics. So we're just going to pass in electronics. And using the same approach, we are going to create other things like laptops and Dell and MacBook and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and format a little bit nicer. There we go. So we have created these different categories, uh, starting with the electronics, going to the computers and laptops. Laptops will have Dell and MacBook. That's why you can see that they're sharing the same parent. And then for XPS, the, it, the parent will be Dell and M1 parent will be MacBook. But you can, you know, create your own categories. The next thing is to insert all of these different things. So I'll say context.insert and electronics. But I need to insert all of these things because we are not really creating these dynamically. We are hard coding it, right? So I'll have to insert all of these things like this. Okay. So this means when I press a button, it is simply going to run all of this code, create all of these different categories, and insert it into the model context, which is going to save in memory because we have set over here in memory. So the final part that is remaining is, well, how do we display it? The fetching part is easy because we can use query, which is part of Swift data, private var categories, and categories, category over here, okay? And now the part is, okay, how do I display it? Well, you can use many different things. You can, I can use an outline group. An outline group is basically a view that is capable of displaying tree-like structure. And there are many different overloads, as you can see. I'm going to use the one that takes in the root, because we do have the root, uh, the children, the ID, and the content. So who is the root? Now, in this case, we can pass in categories. Okay, categories is the root. The ID, well, in this case, we can pass in ID because each category will have an ID, which is created by Swift data itself. Children, 
Well, this will be items. That's why we created the items property. And now it's up to us that how we want to display it. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and display the name and that's it. Okay. Let's go ahead and click add categories. And this is how it actually displays it. Now, if I click on these things, you can see it goes to computers and laptops and MacBooks and all that. Uh, it looks okay, but let's go ahead and make it better by simply inserting it inside a list. Okay, now let's go ahead and click Add Categories. Well, when you perform Add Categories, it just displays us every single thing, right? And the reason is that we are displaying in the outline group when it starts, we are just fetching all the categories and we are displaying all the categories. And these are all the categories, M1 and MacBook and computers and laptops and Dell, all of these are categories. But what we want to do is we only want to display a single category. So I can go ahead and perform a filter. We know that if we want to display the root, the one thing about the root is that it doesn't really have any parent. So the parent of the root is nil. So we can perform that so that only a single root node is getting displayed. And there we go. Now we have electronics and I can click on it and I can go to computers. And in the computers, I have laptops. In the laptop, I have two different laptops like Dell and MacBook. For Dell, I have XPS and for MacBook, I have M1. And if you open this up, there's nothing there. All right, so this is how you can create kind of like a recursive tree-like structure in Swift data and in Swift UI, uh, where you are also using the outline group because that is capable of building this kind of a tree nested structure. And that's it, so hopefully you have enjoyed it. Thank you so much. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my website, which is adamsharp.school. And on School, you can find tons and tons of different courses. And I'm also hosting workshops. We just wrapped up one of our workshops for Reality Kit uh, just yesterday. And uh, now I'm hosting on March 23rd, Introduction to Server Side Swift using Vapor Workshop. These workshops are very hands-on. There are no slides. It's right down to the coding. That's it, all right? So it's gonna be amazing. And check out all these lists of the courses. So the Reality Kit Workshop, you can get the recording available, uh, MVVM and Swift UI Core Data Bootcamp. Then you also have the Swift Data Bootcamp. And Swift Data Bootcamp, it has all the stuff that you can learn about Swift data. I have courses on testament development, Reality Kit Fundamentals. You have uh, Async and Await, Swift UI Fundamentals, Recipes, MVVM Design Pattern, and many more. And you can buy these codes individually, as you can see, different pricing. Uh, or you can simply go ahead and buy the actual, over here, the membership plan. And this membership plan is going to give you access to all the courses. Workshops are not included, so workshop you have to still pay for it. But the great thing is that with a monthly or annual plan, you get access to like 22 courses, 130 hours of content, all right? So this is an amazing deal. Uh, so check out, go to awesomesharp.school and thank you so much for watching.